Shane Simpson back with you from Guitar Work. Welcome. Uh, this is a fun one. This is Can't You See by Marshall Tucker. I've chosen this one. Um, it's going to be a very easy three chord song for most of us. I think you're going to find uh, D, C, add 9, and G. We'll go through those slowly, but I'm going to guess you probably already know those. I'm always choosing this song, and this is for Andy, by the way, in Texas. My good friend Andy in the great state of Texas. Thanks, Andy. I know this is one you want to play to the recording. We'll get you there with this one for sure. It's been a great year in Skype and all that with you, so thanks for that. Um, three chords, as I was saying, and uh, I always choose this one for a strumming, for a strumming thing. Uh, the left hand, again, is very straight ahead. It's more about the strum I want to talk to you here about today. get a lot of questions. Actually, most of the questions are about right hand strumming. Hey, my strumming sounds uneven, or my uh, people are asking, why is my strumming sound uneven? Uh, or I'm hitting it too hard, or my high E string's too loud, all these things. Um, so we'll talk a lot about, um, about where to place your arm and uh, just some general guidelines that, that, that should improve your strumming. Um, thank you for coming back and it's been uh, it's been a long uh, it's been a, a, a good couple of years doing this and uh, thank you for all your uh, subscribing and all your comments and suggestions and uh, all, it, it's really fun to hear from a lot of you so thanks for that um, this song again three chords you got D coming in I'm gonna guess that you know a D right there D chord and it's gonna go from there to C add 9 this guy right here C add 9 and that looks an awful lot like your four finger G, which of course is going to be this guy here. That's it, three chords. It starts on D, it goes to C add nine after four beats, then it's going to go to G, and then back to D. So watch out, it starts and ends on D. Um, so the D is going to have to go twice around when you when you do the repeat. Um, and the, the strumming, uh, and I should tell you, stop tape right there. If those chords are new to you, stop tape right there and try to get them together. Here's a couple of tips on, on changing those chords. Your ring finger, your third finger there should not move the entire song. It will not move and shouldn't move. It kind of, he's common to all three chords. So keep them there. Just, it kind of rings between the chord changes, helps to seal things up a little bit. So D, uh, on the very last upstroke of the D chord, I am going to add the pinky which gets me over to C add 9. And you'll hear that in there. And then over to the G, that's easy to do. Middle and first finger are moving. And you're back to D again without moving that third finger. Um, the strumming pattern, uh, there's lots of guitars going on in there. Uh, I'm not doing the intro bit here, a beautiful intro all over the place. Um, uh, this is just your rhythm part, D, C add 9, and G. The strumming, I'll do straight 16ths. So no formal pattern like a series of downs and then ups and downs. Really, it's just down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. But it's all about the feel. So I'm going to go D, and it's 16th notes means there are four attacks or four strums per beat. So I'm counting that. Uh, chickens, I'm going to go walk the chicken, walk the chicken, walk the chicken, walk the chicken. It works really well. Formally, 16s, you tend to count them 1 E and uh, 2 E and uh, 3 E and uh, 4 E and uh, I just find it easier to talk chickens. Uh, walk the chicken, walk the chicken, walk the chicken, walk the chicken. So four chickens on the D, C add 9, four chickens. Walk the chicken, walk the chicken, walk the chicken, walk the G, four chickens. Walk the chicken, walk the chicken, walk the chicken, walk. Back to D, four chickens. Walk the chicken, walk the chicken. Now we begin again on D. Walk the chick for the repeat. Four more chickens. C add nine, and a two, and a three, and a four. G, walk the chicken, walk the chicken, walk the chicken, walk the D. Walk the chicken, walk the chicken. Good, yeah, so if those chords are new to you or if you're having any trouble, if you're stumbling between chord changes, it'd be a good idea to stop tape. Just go get that together because if this guy here falters, left hand, right hand doesn't tend to know what to do, he's going to want to stop as well. So go get that together and come back and see us for the play along here. We'll, we'll do a slow play along and a faster, and a, sorry, full speed play along uh, toward the end of the video. Um, now, uh, guidelines, right hand, so important. Um, your primary rest, as I call it. Uh, if you are resting on your bicep like that, always a bad thing. Don't rest on your bicep. If you do, your strum it tends to emanate from the elbow, okay? You're having to hold up your right arm. If I'm resting on my bicep, I'm having to hold up my right arm. And the strum is going to come more from the elbow than it is from the wrist or the forearm. So we don't want that. Uh, most of your detail will come if you rest just below the elbow. I'm on my forearm, just below the elbow, and now I'm, I can kind of pivot like that and I've got sympathetic rotation there in the forearm as the wrist is doing most of the work. Uh, so it looks something like this, I'm sitting on a D here. Not hitting hard either. Not hitting hard. Yeah. So that that to me is the most important thing for strum. You see people doing this and it's you just don't get a lot of detail and it probably doesn't feel too good to do that either. This feels really musical if you're resting just below the elbow there. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. 
Um, the second thing people are always asking now, um, to your right arm, typically faster means louder. Okay, we don't want that. Faster does not have to be louder. You should be able to go to full speed toward the end of the video here without increasing your volume. That's a really, really big deal. It's counterintuitive, but the lighter you hold that pick, don't squeeze that pick because then you're gonna get snagged. You're gonna get snagged, usually on the upstroke. You're gonna get snagged, the pick will go flying or the stupid thing will rotate and what do you do? I happen to hold my pick. I don't use the pointy end. I've told many of you via Skype, etc. I don't use the pointy end. A long time ago, I decided I'm gonna try what I'll call the heel of the pick. I'm holding it, I'm kind of hanging onto the pointy end and I'm using it to hard for you to see I'm sure up close but just I'm not using the pointy end I'm using what I'll call the, the heel or just the other side the wider part and when I switch to that man I got more to hang on to I hold it between my thumb and my middle finger primarily and my first finger just gets there to bat it back into place if the thing starts rotating which they do of course we all have trouble hanging on to picks of course um, at first um, just making sure everything's working there uh, so that how to hold your pick. Now it's like telling somebody how to hold a pen. You're gonna grab it how you grab it. It's a very difficult thing to change if you've been playing for a while. Uh, and it's not wrong. Half the world will hold it with the thumb and first finger. And my only trouble with that is if it starts to rotate, you have no recourse, you're doomed. You're gonna have to stop and you're gonna have to re-grab re that pick. Um, so that's how I do it, thumb and middle. I'm not saying it's the only way, it's, the, it's worked well for me. First finger just gets on there when he needs to to, to stop it from rotating. Um, I'm using an Ultex Dunlop, Ultex, um, 1.14 and I think they're just terrific picks. Um, the thing, well, when we first start out, a lot of people use thin picks and you hear a lot of pick scrape with the thin picks, um, which is not my favorite sound. So you might uh, try to bump it up to a medium and gradually bump up to something that's this hard, 1.14. The trouble again with thin picks, not only the pick slapping noise, is that um, they, when you accent, they just flex. Okay, they just flex. So if you try to hit harder, they just flex and they kind of rob you of that energy you're trying to put into the strings. A harder pick, this is very hard, a harder pick, whatever energy you put into that strum is gonna translate directly. So it takes some getting used to for sure, but don't hang on to that pick too tight. Um, another thing about strumming, usually people are complaining, oh, D is a perfect example. You're on a D chord, D chord like that, and you'll hear an unnaturally loud upstroke of the high E in the up, like, like that. It's just, whoa, it's a little too harsh. Uh, typically that that's coming from not rotating your hand far enough. So you're probably, without even thinking about it, you probably have, when you do a downstroke, you probably have a bit of an angle in the pick. The pick is kind of angled uh, back towards you, just a tiny bit, just a tiny bit, because you're not dragging it perpendicularly through the strings. Like, you, you would know if you're doing that. So you don't uh, doing that, you've got a nice angle going on. And now if you don't turn that pick around and come back with an equal but opposite angle on the upstroke, you're gonna collide with that high E. You're gonna collide, it's gonna get snagged. That's typically where that big high E annoying kind of, uh, people call it a twang. And I guess it's a good word for it. So down, rotate like that and come back, hit that high E string. And don't collide with the high E string. The pick should give. The pick should give a little bit like a shock absorber. So you don't go, you don't hang onto it quickly and just, uh, sorry, tightly and like that, that's just a little too strident in the sound. So you get that nice brushy sound. I feel like I'm barely hanging onto that pick. And I'll call them whisper strums. They're not loud. Well, a singer does not like it if you're pounding it out like that. Hard to get over top. Back, back. Yeah. Um, so this, this serves uh, for, for any song you're gonna be strumming. These are great techniques that somebody gave me and it really, really changed things for me. Get that nice brushy sound. Um, so I am gonna go through it here. Uh, enough about that, I'll go through it here. At a reduced tempo, the song comes in at, uh, at, don't tell me now, the song comes in at 81 beats a minute. And on the fabulous beat buddy here, I'm going to bring it down to 64 beats a minute just for practicing. So play along. I'll shout the chord out slightly in advance and tell you what's coming next, but it is very repetitive. Let's just treat this like a play along, okay? A little calisthenic for your right hand. Easy chords, just get in there and try to get the best strumming you can. Nice and even, nice and even. Remember, watch out for that primary rest. If you, if you get nothing else out of this video, make sure that you get that. So room up like that. If you're using a big dreadnought guitar, you might find your right shoulder is up like that. And sure enough, it will be, and it should. Uh, you may have to switch to classical where you're on the left leg, and that'll kind of straighten out your, uh, your shoulders if you get sore. So here it is, D, C add nine, G, D. Uh, can't you see Marshall Tucker at reduced tempo, 64 beats a minute. I'll do a couple of minutes of it, just round around. Okay, play along at home. Here it comes. One, two, three, four, D, one. C add nine. G. And a D. We'll talk about accents in a sec. D again. One. Three, C add nine. One, two, three, four, G. And a D. Let's 
go a few more times. D again. Two, three. C add nine. Two, three, four. G. One, two, three. Here's a D. Come on. One, two, three. And again, D. One, two, three. C add nine. Go. One, two, three. Here's a G coming. One, two, three. And a D coming. One, two, three. Two more. D again. One, two, three. C add nine. Right here. One, two, three. Here's a G coming. G. Go. One, two, three. And a D. And a one, two, three. D again. One, two, three. C add nine coming. One, two, three, four. G. One, two, three. Here's a D coming. There we go. Good. So that's 64 beats a minute. Just a little slow down there uh, so you could get the hang of it. Uh, we'll go right up to 81 beats a minute here now. Um, now, about accenting. Accenting. Uh, it's so important. So much of the music we hear out there and that you know and love, I'm sure, um, we have something called a backbeat accent, which is on beats two and four. Now, it's not, it won't come naturally at first if it's new to you. Your body's going to want to accent on beats one and three, but sure enough, we need beats two and four, the opposite of what most of us are sort of born doing. So if I do this, walk the chicken, walk the chicken, walk the chicken, walk the chicken. Every second walk is going to be accented. So three, four, walk the chicken, walk the chicken, walk the chicken, walk the chicken. I'll just stay on D. Good way to think of it maybe is this soft, loud, soft, loud. So speaking of that downstroke, three, four, soft, loud, soft, loud, soft, loud, soft, loud, soft, loud, soft, loud, soft, loud. So that, that's really the pulse of it, so important. Um, now what, make, what can make it tricky at first is that we're accenting beats two and four and we're changing chords on beat one. Now when your left hand moves, your right hand wants to hit harder, so it wants to hit uh, the new chord hard. You don't have to do that. It's quite the opposite, actually. Uh, with the, with that again at 64 beats a minute. To with the accents, three slow it down here. Walk the chicken, walk the chicken. So where the snare drum is. C I dying. Whack. G coming. Whack. Whack D. Whack. That's your snare. Whack. 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 C I dying. Whack. Whack G, whack, whack D, whack. So beats two and four, two and four. Now that can be challenging. Um, really throw yourself. Uh, play along with the recording at home. This video as well, but play along with the actual recording. And there's ways to slow it down. There's apps to do that if you find it just too quick for you. Um, you know, if I bring it up to 81, that accent's really, really important, but if you're not up to it just yet, just get the chords and all the things we've been talking about about strumming. I'll bring it back to 81 here, and here is just a couple of minutes of straight pounding it out. Now remember, as we go faster, your right hand's not going to want to go louder. Try not to do that. Try to keep it whispery, and don't hang on to that pick too tightly, and just nice, brushy right hand stuff. Uh, here it comes with the accents at 81 beats a minute for a couple of minutes. One, two, three, four. Whack, C I nine. Whack, whack G. Whack, D coming. Whack, whack, D again. Whack, whack, C I nine coming. Whack, G coming. Whack, whack D. One, whack, D again. Whack, one, whack, C I nine here. Whack, G coming. Whack, whack. D coming, whack, whack. Let's do a few more. Keep it going. D, one, two, three. C, I, nine, and a one, two, three, and a four. G, one, two, three, four. D, one, two, three. D again. Ow. One, two, three. C, I, nine, go. One, two, three. G coming, whack. D coming. Feel the accent right there. Mm. D again, whack. C add whack, 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 G, whack, D coming, whack, one, two, three, four, and soft, loud, soft, C add nine, soft, loud, soft, loud, G, soft, loud, soft, D coming, loud, soft, loud, soft, loud, D again, soft, loud, soft, C add nine, yeah, play on, G 
G coming up loud, soft, loud, soft, loud, D, soft. Now, a couple more, D coming loud, soft, loud, soft, C add nine, soft, loud, soft, loud, G, soft, loud, soft, loud, D, soft. Now, last one coming, D again. C add nine. G here. Loud, soft, D coming. Soft, loud, there we go, soft, loud, good stuff. So that's that, I mean, three chords, uh, but I always use this song now for, um, for people that are already playing chords and they're doing okay, just wanna work on the right hand. Uh, the guitar is in the right hand, if your right hand is a reason. This guy is your dominant hand, your more coordinated hand. People think guitar is in this hand. Yeah, he's got a job to do down here, but this guy is your arranger and your conductor, deadly, deadly important. So um, I hope that's beneficial. Play along, play along, play along, and uh, get to enjoy it for sure. Uh, I wanna thank you again for coming back. Hit that subscribe button, there'll be an opportunity to do that. What am I forgetting? Subscribe Thank you for your comments and all that. If you hit the bell notification as well, it'll tell you uh, when new videos have come out. So uh, try to upload as regularly as possible. It's difficult with schedules sometimes, but glad to be back again. Uh, send me questions via YouTube. We'll see you in the comment section and uh, enjoy. One, two, three. Ow. Yeah.